Section 1 Introduction In this introduction, we discuss the use of modern sequence models in predicting the next token in a sequence, which is a method that doesn't rely on any specific domain knowledge. For instance, autoregressive language models are trained to predict the next subword based on the preceding text, without any preconceived understanding of parsing or syntax. This method has also been successful in continuous domains like audio and image generation. In the context of driving, we can think of road users as participants in an ongoing conversation, constantly reacting and responding to each other's actions. To navigate this complex web of interactions, it's crucial to be able to predict the likely actions and responses of the other road users. Just as language models can predict the flow of a conversation, we propose using similar sequence models to predict the behavior of road users. A common approach to modeling the future state of the world is to break down the joint distribution of agent behavior into independent distributions for each agent. However, these marginal predictions are not sufficient for a planning system as they don't account for the future dependencies between the actions of different agents, leading to inconsistent forecasting. Some existing joint prediction models separate the generation of marginal trajectories and interactive scoring. For instance, they might first generate a small set of marginal trajectories for each agent independently, then assign a learned potential to each pair of inter-agent trajectories using a belief propagation algorithm. These models can capture the correlation between a leading agent decelerating and a trailing agent decelerating, but they may fail to infer which one is causing the other to slow down. In contrast, previous joint models that use an autoregressive factorization do respect future temporal dependencies. These models typically rely on explicit latent variables for diversity, optimized through an evidence lower bound or normalizing flow. In our work, we propose a model, Motion LM, that combines trajectory generation and interaction modeling in a single, temporally causal, decoding process over discrete motion tokens. This model is trained to maximize the log probability of these token sequences among interacting agents. At inference time, joint trajectories are produced step by step where interacting agents sample tokens simultaneously, attend to one another, and repeat. Unlike previous models that manually enforce trajectory multimodality during training, our model is entirely latent variable and anchor-free, with multimodality emerging solely as a characteristic of sampling. Motion LM can be applied to several downstream behavior prediction tasks, including marginal, joint, and conditional predictions. Our contributions include casting multi-agent motion forecasting as a language modeling task, introducing a temporally causal decoder over discrete motion tokens trained with a causal language modeling loss. We also pair sampling from our model with a simple rollout aggregation scheme that facilitates weighted mode identification for joint trajectories, establishing new state-of-the-art performance on the Waymo Open Motion Dataset Interaction Prediction Challenge. We perform extensive ablations of our approach as well as analysis of its temporally causal conditional predictions, which are largely unsupported by current joint forecasting models. In terms of related work, behavior predictors are often evaluated on their predictions for individual agents. Previous methods process the rasterized scene with CNNs, while more recent works represent scenes with points and polygraphs and process them with GNNs. To handle the multimodality of future trajectories, some models manually enforce diversity via predefined anchors or intention points. Other works learn diverse modes with latent variable modeling. Interactive behavior predictors model the joint distribution of agents' futures. This task has been far less studied than marginal motion prediction. For example, the Waymo Open Motion Dataset Challenge leaderboard currently has 71 published entries for marginal prediction compared to only 14 for interaction prediction. Some models output joint modes using a transformer-based mixture model. To avoid the exponential blow-up from a full joint model, some models consider pairwise joint distributions. Other models derive joint probabilities by simply multiplying marginal trajectory probabilities, essentially treating agents as independent, which may limit accuracy. Unlike our autoregressive factorization, these models typically follow one-shot, parallel across time factorizations and do not explicitly model temporally causal interactions. Section Summary In this section, the authors introduce a new approach called Motion LM that combines trajectory generation and interaction modeling for multi-agent motion forecasting. They train their model to maximize the log probability of discrete motion tokens among interacting agents, using a training objective inspired by autoregressive language models. 
Motion LM outperforms previous approaches on the Waymo Open Motion Dataset Interaction Prediction Challenge and allows for temporally causal conditional predictions. Section. Autoregressive Trajectory Prediction. Dot. We're going to discuss two main topics. Autoregressive Trajectory Prediction and Discrete Sequence Modeling in Continuous Domains. First, let's talk about Autoregressive Trajectory Prediction. This is a method used to predict the future paths of multiple agents, such as cars or pedestrians, in a scene. It does this by generating trajectories at regular intervals. Some methods use complex models and techniques like latent variables or beam search to make these predictions. However, our method is different. We don't rely on these complex techniques. Instead, we generate multiple possible joint trajectories by directly sampling from a learned distribution of discrete motion token sequences. Next, let's discuss discrete sequence modeling in continuous domains. When we're generating sequences in continuous domains, a common approach is to break down the output space into discrete parts and predict categorical distributions at each step. This approach has been used in various fields, such as image generation and audio generation. In our case, we use a simple uniform quantization of axis-aligned deltas between consecutive waypoints of agent trajectories. Now, Let's move on to our main model, which we call Motion LM. Our goal with Motion LM is to model the interactions between multiple agents in a way that can be applied to different tasks. These tasks include marginal, joint, and conditional forecasting. To do this, we need a generative framework that can capture the substantial variability in driving scenarios. We also want to preserve temporal dependencies in our model. This means that the inference in our model follows a directed acyclic graph where the parents of every node are earlier in time and children are later. This allows us to make conditional forecasts that more closely resemble causal interventions. Let's consider a scenario where we have input data, which includes context such as road elements, traffic light states, and features describing road agents and their recent histories. Our task is to generate predictions for joint agent states at future time steps. These future state targets are typically two-dimensional waypoints, with each waypoint forming the full ground truth trajectory for an individual agent. In our model, we predict an action for each target agent at each future time step. These actions are formulated as discrete motion tokens from a finite vocabulary. We then factorize the distribution over joint future action sequences as a product of conditionals. This means that we treat agent actions as conditionally independent at a given time given the previous actions and scene context. In our experiments, we found that our model's factorization, which is entirely free of latent variables, is sufficient to surpass state-of-the-art joint prediction models. The multimodal predictions stem purely from categorical token sampling at each rollout time step. Section Summary The paper discusses autoregressive trajectory prediction, which involves generating multi-agent trajectories that are consistent with the scene. Unlike other methods, this approach directly samples from a learned distribution of discrete motion token sequences, without relying on latent variables or beam search. The model also takes into account temporal dependencies and factors the distribution over joint future action sequences as a product of conditionals. Section. Training Objective. Dot. We've developed a generative model called Motion LM, which is designed to mimic the observed behavior of multiple agents. The model is trained to maximize the likelihood of multi-agent action sequences. This is similar to how modern language models are trained, where we use teacher forcing. This means we provide the model with the correct previous actions at each step, rather than predicted ones. This approach tends to make the training process more stable and eliminates the need for sampling during training. In our training process, each agent is exposed to the correct action sequence of all other agents up to the current time step. This allows for parallel processing when using modern attention-based architectures. However, our model does have the same theoretical limitations as other imitation learning frameworks, such as the potential for compounding errors and self-delusions due to unobserved factors. Despite these limitations, we found that our model performs well in practice on forecasting tasks. Our model is made up of two main networks, an encoder and a trajectory decoder. The encoder processes the initial elements of the scene, and the trajectory decoder performs both cross-attention to the scene encodings and self-attention along agent motion tokens. The scene encoder processes information from several input sources, including the road graph, 
traffic light states, and the history of surrounding agents' trajectories. We use an early fusion network to encode the scene because it can process all modalities together with minimal bias. The features are extracted with respect to each agent's frame of reference. The input tensors are then fed to a stack of self-attention layers that exchange information across all past time steps and agents. Our trajectory decoder generates sequences of motion tokens for multiple agents. We transform continuous waypoints into sequences of discrete tokens. This allows us to treat sampling as a classification task at each time step. We've found that discretizing continuous targets in this way is effective in other continuous domains, such as audio and mesh generation. To extract target discrete tokens, we normalize each agent's trajectory with respect to the position and heading of the agent at the start of the scenario. We then parameterize a uniformly quantized vocabulary according to a total number of per-coordinate bins as well as maximum and minimum delta values. A continuous, single-coordinate delta action can then be mapped to a corresponding index, resulting in two indices for a complete action per step. We use a greedy search to extract actions that accurately reconstruct an entire trajectory. We also use a verlet step where a zero action indicates that the same delta index should be used as the previous step. This helps reduce the total vocabulary size, simplifying the dynamics of training. Finally, we compute a learned value embedding and two learned positional embeddings for each discrete motion token. These are combined via an element-wise sum before being input to the transformer decoder. We include a single self-attention mechanism in the decoder that operates along flattened sequences of all modeled agents' motion tokens over time. This means that these self-attended sequences grow linearly in the number of jointly modeled agents, but the absolute sequence length here is still quite small. Section Summary The training objective of Motion LM is to match the joint distribution of observed agent behavior by training a generative model using a maximum likelihood objective over multi-agent action sequences. The model consists of an encoder that processes initial scene elements and a trajectory decoder that performs cross-attention to the scene encodings and self-attention along agent motion tokens. The trajectory decoder generates sequences of discrete motion tokens for multiple agents by transforming continuous trajectories into sequences of discrete tokens, which helps mitigate compounding error effects and simplifies the dynamics of training. Section. Ego Agent Reference Frames. Dot. We're going to discuss a few key concepts from the paper, starting with the idea of ego agent reference frames. In our model, we represent each agent in the scene from their own perspective, treating them as the central or ego agent. This allows us to focus on the features of the scene that are relevant to each agent. By grouping these ego agents together, we can process them simultaneously during training and inference, which speeds up the process. Next, we'll talk about enforcing temporal causality. In our model, the sequence of actions taken by an agent is influenced only by past actions, not future ones. This is ensured by using a mask during training that only allows the model to update its representations based on past actions. This mask creates a pattern that allows each agent to be aware of the other's past actions up to the current step. We also use a method called temporally causal conditioning. This allows us to predict the actions of all agents in the scene based on the actions of a single query agent. This can be seen as a way of approximating the effect of interventions in a causal network, even when there may be unobserved factors influencing the agent's actions. We illustrate this concept with a causal Bayesian network, where intervening on certain nodes results in a network that obeys temporal causality. In terms of rollout aggregation, we aim to represent the possible future actions of the agents in the form of a few key modes. Each mode is assigned a probability and represents a possible outcome. We use a method called non-maximum suppression to group these outcomes together and estimate their probabilities. We also use model ensembling to improve the quality of our predictions. We tested our model on the Waymo Open Motion dataset, which contains real-world driving scenarios. The dataset is divided into examples that include features like traffic signals, lane features, and agent states. We also participated in two prediction challenges, one for individual agents and one for interacting agents. Our model performed well in these tests, ranking second in the marginal prediction challenge and significantly reducing the miss rate compared to previous models. 
we found that our model was able to capture the diversity of possible future actions without relying on fixed points or trajectories. Section Summary The paper introduces the concept of ego agent reference frames, where each modeled agent is treated as the ego agent once to facilitate cross attention to the agent centric feature encodings. The authors also discuss the enforcement of temporal causality in their autoregressive factorization, ensuring that motion token sampling for any agent is only affected by past tokens and not future ones. Furthermore, the paper discusses the rollout aggregation technique used to achieve joint motion forecasting, where the joint future distribution is represented by a small number of joint modes. The authors employ non-maximum suppression, NMS, aggregation and model ensembling to uncover the underlying modes and estimate their probabilities, improving the quality of predictions. The model's performance is evaluated on marginal and joint motion forecasting benchmarks, achieving competitive results in terms of soft map and miss rate. Section. Interactive motion prediction. Dot. Our model has achieved the best results in the interactive prediction challenge, showing a 6% improvement in the mean average precision, map, and a 3% improvement in the miss rate compared to the previous top scoring entry. Unlike the previous approach, our model doesn't score pairs of pre-built marginal trajectories but generates joint rollouts directly. We've found that our model has the lowest prediction overlap rate, which suggests that it makes predictions that are consistent with the scene. We tested two versions of our model on the validation set, one that doesn't use attention across the agents during rollouts, marginal, and one that does, joint. The joint version, which uses interactive attention at a frequency of 2 Hz, had a 38% lower overlap rate than the marginal version. This suggests that the interactive attention allows the agents to respond to each other more effectively. We also studied the impact of the frequency of interactive attention during the joint rollouts. We found that the performance generally improved as the agents were allowed to interact more frequently. Higher interactive attention frequencies not only led to more accurate joint predictions but also reduced the likelihood of implausible overlaps, or collisions, between different agents' predictions. The number of rollouts we generate is also important. We need to generate enough samples from the model to accurately represent the multimodal future distribution. We found that the performance improved as we used more rollouts. For our final results, we used 512 rollouts per replica but we found that 32 rollouts were enough to surpass the previous top entry on joint map. Our model also supports temporally causal conditioning, where we fix one agent to follow a specified trajectory and stochastically roll out the target agent. We can also modify the model to expose the full trajectory of the query agent to the target agent during conditioning. We found that both types of conditioning led to more accurate predictions for the target agent. However, a causal conditioning, which exposes more information to the model, led to a greater improvement than temporally causal conditioning. However, the better scores for a causal conditioning are largely due to predictions that would be nonsensical if interpreted as predicted reactions to the query agent. For example, in a scenario where an autonomous vehicle, AV, is stopped behind another agent, planning to move forward into the other agent's current position could be viewed as a safe maneuver with a causal conditioning as the other agent also moving forward is correlated with, but not caused by, the AV proceeding. However, it is typically the lead agent moving forward that causes the trailing AV to proceed, and the AV moving forward on its own would simply rear-end the lead agent. In conclusion, our model's ability to generate joint rollouts directly and its use of interactive attention allows it to make more accurate predictions and reduce the likelihood of implausible overlaps between different agents' predictions. The number of rollouts and the type of conditioning used also have a significant impact on the model's performance.